Yo, what's up guys? I am super excited to get this interview out. I just finished editing it and wanted to put this intro in real quick. The interview is quite long, I think it's about an hour. Um, so there's a lot to cover and I'm sure you guys are gonna skip through, watch some important parts or whatnot. But I just wanted to say that we cover um, Pup Rig, Alex's brand from zero to a million dollars, his strategies in this video. We even make a cost cap bid ladder campaign together um, about halfway through the video, I believe. So please check that out. We also go over Alex's strategies and his views on saturation and how important creatives are when it comes to testing and scaling. We also talk about a lot of things in between all of that. So please watch this interview all the way through and I promise you guys will learn a lot. You know, this day I'm still learning. There's there's so much to learn in the space and there's so many levels and um, yeah, that's just a really quick like, brief introduction of of when i started uh and what i've been doing for the last couple of years yeah um so if you guys don't know um it's kind of alex's thing i would say is that he's open about his brand he shares his brand name and um, you can go to his website um it's pup ring um a lot of people in the space kind of don't show their brand names it's kind of unique that you do that um but was pup ring did it start off as job shipping or and how quickly did you turn into a brand Yeah, great, great question. So Pup Ring originally started as uh, as a drop shipping store. Um, okay. Me and my business par partner uh, started that back in 2020, March of 2020. And uh, from there, um, we very quickly learned that shipping from China uh, and taking two weeks to get your product from point A to point B is going to get a lot of angry customers. And uh, we very quickly got our Facebook page score that went down started getting restrictions, started getting page bans. And we're like, hey, this is not that fun, right? Um, we ended up then purchasing a laser engraving machine. We were like, how can we figure out how to make this business better? How can we give our customers a better experience? How can we create a brand, right? Since up, up until that point, it was it was just popping, you know, popping drop shipping stores up and down and playing the whole game of of running a creative until the account either gets restricted or until the product gets saturated and looking yeah. back looking back really the focus i want to think of like the right wording here looking back i want to say that when i accomplished something with a drop shipping store i was like oh yeah i figured it out and that was the issue the issue was that I would think that I figured it out. I would think that, okay, now I can just let this run and it's going to keep making money and not have to constantly maintain it and not have to constantly make new content for it. And then it would, you know, go down. The product would, product would stop working when in reality it was my marketing that would stop working. Um, and that's, that's a long, long over the course of those years, since 2020 when Pop Ring was created up until right now, that journey really taught me the, the importance of content. That journey taught me the importance of creating a good product. That journey taught me the importance of creating a good customer experience that is going to then have those customers come and buy the second product that you release, the third product that you release, the fourth product that you release. And that's how you build a brand, right? Um, there's a lot of, you know, that that's, here's, here's why I want to take this conversation that's why I'm not afraid to to tell people what I run, because I know that there's only going to be a small percentage of people that is actually going to execute and take what I'm showing and apply it to their own brands. You know, we have 20, 30 people that are just ripping the product and stealing the marketing, but they're not creating, you know, 20 new angles each week to test, 20 new pieces yeah. of content each week to test that are completely new angles hitting different pockets of audiences, right? Yeah they're just stealing the content or they're just ripping the product. And there's, yeah, if you do not simply put, give your customers a good experience, you're not going to be able to create something that's going to be long-term. That's going to be an asset that you can one day sell. Gotcha. So you're not worried about your competitors like most shopkeepers are um, because you're already so far ahead of them on creatives and in creating content that they can't replicate because one thing I noticed is that you have so many creatives. 
on your on your videos that you show on your YouTube when you're making campaigns, you have like V1 through I don't even know hundreds probably, um, and yeah, you're right. Most dropshippers just run out until their creative dies and they think that the product's over. But I think you kind of jumped over that hurdle of having so many different angles, um, and and trying out new things where other people just just um shut it off and and pump and dump and move to the next product. Um, was that did you have to jump over that hurdle of like not giving up on this product? And like, because I feel like most people just pop a store, they test creatives, and then they quit. But why why didn't you quit with this product? So, yeah, that's a good question. So we we originally almost did. So when pop ring very early stages of pop ring, we were just running on Facebook, and we were not running very profitably. We were thinking that like we had you know order metrics and those other things that track profitability yeah but we didn't have books you know we weren't we weren't we didn't have spreadsheets that we were that we were planning out um a weekly cash flow where we were looking a couple weeks in advance you know and planning out inventory purchases um and tracking down to the fee costs on on a PL on a daily basis tracking employee costs tracking your vas tracking all of the ad costs combined um, and around the beginning of 2021, from March of 2020 to, to December of 2020, um, we just did strictly Facebook ads. Uh, we were push, pushing some volume, but beginning of 2021, we started to kind of run the numbers and we're like, hey, we're not running something here that, that's going to be profitable. We have to reconsider this or we have to potentially do something different or maybe our product is dying out. Yeah. That is when we ended up stumbling on, uh, that's kind of the the golden era, I would say, of, of TikTok when everybody was starting to have the opportunity to go viral. Um, my belief for this is TikTok was a new platform. They needed users. What better way to attract users than to give users the opportunity to have exposure and to grow a platform? This would mean that a girl at school would start posting, she would go viral on TikTok and now she'd be telling all her friends about it. Now all her friends are downloading yeah. TikTok. It's a beautiful marketing strategy that I believe TikTok had to gain users. And this is something that we were able to, to um, jump on, right? We were able to jump on that, that wagon. Um, and one TikTok, it was a fourth TikTok we ended up posting, ended up completely changing like the business. Really? Um, it was a TikTok... And and we can, I could probably pull it up, but it's a, it was a TikTok that was like, apparently TikTok can make small businesses go viral overnight, you know, something like that. And it was like a voice yeah. with like, like that played. Um, I posted that on a Friday evening and that Friday, me and my business partner had a conversation. We're like, Hey, is this business something going to, you know, are we going to be able to continue this? Is this, do we need to shut it down? Do we need to, you know, do something about that? just because we were looking at the numbers and it was not making sense. The next day, that video gets a million views and about $26,000 of revenue with about 60% like margin in one day wow. from a single TikTok. And we were like, shit, dude, we have something here that we can continue to. <laughs> wow. uh, so that's like, that's what started that's really what started the snowball effect for content. Yeah. Creation. Yeah. Okay. Um, and moving from there, that's when I put a lot of my energy into content and I started creating daily content. I started creating multiple times a day, TikToks. I started replying to other people's TikToks. I started to learn more about why are certain accounts going viral? How can I take what they have and apply it to us, allowing us to go viral? And uh, one thing that I learned that I, that I think is key even to this day, if somebody does something, if somebody creates a piece of content that has gone viral, if you recreate that piece of content, there's a very good chance that if you do it right, if you have it engaging, if you have it either controversial or have people talk about it and have people save it and most importantly have a retention on it, a very good retention on that piece of content, there's a very good chance that that piece of content will also go viral. And 
that is really the secret to how we were able to in, in 2021 do just shy of a million dollars in just organic revenue, which was pretty wow. cool. Wow. And yeah, like that's we would we would find pieces of content that are performing for other people to identify how can we apply this to our niche, right? We sell jewelry for pet owners. How can we apply a video that went viral for somebody selling a mini projector, which this mini projectors weren't, I don't think they were that popular back then. But as an example, somebody yeah. shoots a piece of content where they do, you know, a certain trend with a certain product. Okay, how can we do this with now the rings, right? So that's the logic that we go. I would take it, I would put it in a spreadsheet. What are the shots that they did? How, what are the angles that they did? What's the lighting that they did? What's the mood that they did? Now, how can I recreate that? What are the shots that I need to take? How can we do the same voiceover? Is it an AI yeah. voiceover? How can we do the exact same thing, but different or better, keyword better? And when done, that would result in a piece of content that would perform. And what's, um, what's cool is once you do this enough, you start identifying pieces of content that you can continue to recreate. And then you can have an arsenal of different styles of content that you are constantly pushing on a weekly basis that is constantly getting eyeballs to it, that is constantly getting visitors to your store, that is constantly getting purchasing. And this starts to funnel the entire ecosystem that you're building with your brand. People start to recognize the name. You start running Facebook ads. People start seeing organic posts, then they get hit when they're on the you know bathroom taking a poop, looking on Instagram, they get a pup ring ad, then they purchase <laughs> it from that ad. And it's yeah. this it's this ecosystem that we really didn't start perfecting until last year. Last year we were very heavy um, into into paid content, um, into figuring out how can we get all of these additional uh, traffic sources, top of funnel sources. 2021, we were strictly organic, maybe a little bit of paid. 2022, we're like, all right, we have to get paid in the picture again. And that's kind of what we did. We started taking all these pieces of content that went viral, identifying what parts of those can we use in an ad that we can run. Mm -hmm. Well, shocker, if you take a viral video and you run it as an <laughs> ad, it will perform as well, right? Yeah. So there was a lot of mixing and matching and identifying and, and, and analysis and trial and error. And it's a very difficult journey, but it's a very beautiful journey. And that's, that's why I personally like branding over drop shipping, or I'll say it like this. If you are able to create something that you can truly be proud of, that's what matters in my opinion if you can genuinely provide good experiences and a good product to people and improve somebody's life and create memories of working your ass off in your own business that's what motivates you to keep going right okay. when you have those periods where you're like shit you know this is not working we just lost thousands of dollars we just lost thousands of dollars what do I do? How do I continue? You think back for, you know, when we went viral the first time, I drove down to our facility in Ohio where we're, we were doing the laser engraving. Me, my business partner and the warehouse manager, we were there for like five days straight engraving rings day in and like, and night, wow. like wow. double Red Bulls, like just engraving rings because we had to get the orders out. We had to give yeah. the customers a good experience. And that is something that I believe creates a foundation in your business that allows you to, when you are struggling, you look back and you're like, this is what we built. This is the blood and sweat that went into it. Get back to fucking work and let's, yeah. let's, let's do it. Let's build it. Let's fix it. Right. Yeah. And that's, that's the differentiating factor for me for owning a brand and building something that in, in that, that one day is going to not just change lives, not just be worth more, not just not just be something that's making money, but be something that's, that's more, I don't know. I don't know if that makes yeah. sense. That's how I think about it. It does. And you made me realize, like, I always tell people that I work with that you have to be better than 95% of drop shippers. And it can be easy to do that by putting in the time to, you know, to find products, but it seems like you just want to step ahead and just absolutely 
busted through the door with creatives and content and really going hard on the company and the brand image where most shoppers don't even don't even think about that at all. Um, so just going that extra step seems like it made the biggest difference in the world for you and your brand. hundred percent. Yeah. And there's, you know, we're not, we're not perfect at it. Like even to this day we're we're trying to be better. We need to be better. Um, there's, there's brands that are doing what we're doing. Different niches yeah. 10 times better with building a good brand image with building a whole full ecosystem that's bringing customers in through, through funny exposure videos and then marketing their products. Like I could name multiple off the top of my head. There's a lot of them out there. Just look at like or current organic brands and there's some very smart content strategy out there that allows people to, to, to build something from nothing to build something. And yeah, yeah I think that's cool. Um, is your focus moving forward still going to be more focused on organic or paid ads as well? Cause for me, like I test products with paid ads. If it does well, then I move to organic and try to do both at the same time. But it seems like you really, you're more focused on organic. If I'm getting yeah. that correct. Yeah. So we are making a pivot, a very, a very, very big pivot back towards organic. We have okay. had 2021, very organic focused 20, 2022 very paid focused 2023 is very both focused we're we're producing lots of content on a weekly basis to test for paid um and we just started to produce lots of content on the organic side and the goal is <clears throat> to get back to i would say our peak operating performance if you will was probably, I would say like end of 2021 when we started introducing paid and now we had both of these channels that were both like fully pushing forward and you just have better margins. You know, if you're, if you're paying for only a certain percent of your customers and a certain percent of your customers are coming in from organic exposure, yeah. that's really good. You know, it allows for a business to have extra cash flow to utilize into introducing new products Huge. into expanding the team. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you've obviously dealt with Facebook for quite a while now, and I kind of took a break from Facebook um, and kind of shifted towards TikTok. Um, but from my point of view, I think Facebook is coming back a little bit. I think it's actually a, quite a gold mine right now. Can you talk about the, what Facebook has how has it changed in the past couple of years? So I feel like you've been on it um, through its ups and downs. Yeah. Well, you're going to have, you're going to have your core changes. You know, the iOS changes that came yeah. out, you yeah. know, the attribution, the attributions being all over the place. Um, I would say as far as, as far as a performance, you know, like a look at the performance of Facebook and how it's changed over the years. Facebook for the, you know, ever since they came out with their ad ad platform, they've been making money for people, right? The type of content that has worked on Facebook has changed over time. Back in 2018, I could put a very spammy looking one by one video on Facebook yeah. ads that looked horrible if you ask me now. But back then you run that and you're getting $10 cost per acquisitions and you're like, yeah, it's, you know, whatever it's worth. <laughs> yeah. Now you can't do that. Now you have to test, you know, 20 pieces of content to get one piece of content that's going to get like decently debatable cost per acquisitions in some cases, right? Depends on the brand, depends on the product, product depends on the margin. What I believe what I believe has changed is how, how people use the platform. When you had TikTok come out with their ad platform, every, everybody kind of swarmed to TikTok's ad platform. You had, you know, everyone's like TikTok ads, TikTok ads, TikTok ads. You had a lot of advertisers kind of shift over. That shift over allowed for Facebook to become 
in my opinion, a better platform to advertise on than TikTok because everybody was focusing on TikTok. Now you have all these audiences that nobody's advertising to that you can put your products in front of. Yeah. That was last year, I would say the whole last year easily. This year, we do have a lot of people coming back to Facebook. I was just going to ask that. I would say at this point, yeah, I would say at this point in time, both Facebook and TikTok, in my opinion, are decently volatile. We have days where a specific campaign, you know, like Facebook came out with their Advantage Plus campaigns. Mm -hmm. Well, right as they came out with their Advantage Plus campaigns, TikTok decided to come out with their smart performance campaigns. It's a competitor of the same yeah. campaign style. Yeah. And then Google, I want to say either before those two or in the middle, Google came out with their performance max campaigns, which is very similar concept. So that would, I would say that is a very big um, change on a campaign level that all these platforms introduced. It's not solely talking about Facebook, um, but every time a platform releases a new feature, especially in these last couple of years with AI being a lot more smarter and, and all of their machine learning algorithms being able to target better than you can, I have noticed that it is better to allow them, a better to give them your content, better to be like, hey, Facebook, here is 20 pieces of content I came up with. Run these to people that you think are going to purchase our product. I've seen that perform a lot more than if you're like Facebook target women that are 21 plus that are interested in X, Y, Z and are engaged online shoppers, yeah. <laughs> right? That is my overall conclusion when looking at Facebook, when looking at even TikTok, um, and especially when, when looking at um, Google. So with that being said, do you think that TikTok, like hashtag targeting and even their interest targeting could be still be game changing when it is good. Cause right now, from my experience, it is, it is still horrible. Like broad targeting on TikTok works across the board in almost every single way. Um, but I keep getting these like um, notifications from TikTok saying that they're working on their algorithm, with the hashtag interest and like that it's going to be coming up soon. But like for me, I'm, I'm kind of waiting for that. Um, what do you, what do you think about that? Yeah. Yeah. So there's, there's times where hashtags on TikTok have crushed it for us. You know, $5 cost per acquisitions, amazing. Everybody's yeah. dancing around, great time. But give it a week and it's not performing at all. <laughs> that's where, that's kind of where I want to connect to the previous statement where I said it's volatile. Um, we've seen all sorts, I've tried all sorts of strategies. I've came up with strategies to just throw shit at a wall and see if something's going to work here, or something's going to work there. Or what happens that if you create a bid ladder and then you take that bid and now you created a bid ladder going down all the way to like one cent bids. Like I've tried a bunch of random things and the one conclusive fact that I've came to time after time after time is that while yes, they can work little, you know, gimmicks and, and specific types of targeting, like lookalikes are great. Hashtags are great. Interests are great. Yeah. I personally like to broaden all those. So I like to, if I'm using interest targeting, I'm not going to and I'm not going to be like super, super specific. I'm going to give a broad niche interest that is going to generally hit my target audience. Yeah. What do I mean by that? I will target dogs, like hashtag <laughs> yeah. or like female dogs. And that's it. Just very straightforward, very simple, allowing for the algorithm on any given platform to do the rest of the work. That is what I've seen perform the best. Gotcha. Um, so that has me think like you're able to target these broad interests and in hashtags or whatever, because your, your product is broad. So if you were to start dropshipping right now and pick out a product, are you looking for this very evergreen, broad, broad niches 
um, broad products like for example the dog niche right everyone has a dog um pets animals alike um yeah so if you were to start dropshipping again and doing product research right now what would you be focusing on so the first thing i would look at is what product is going to give me the best opportunity to market it my thesis on e-commerce on on marketing over the last two years specifically has boiled down to content above absolutely everything else you i i you guys have heard the the people that sell like the mud water you guys have seen yeah. people sell literally absolutely everything and anything I would look to find what product is going to have the highest margin, what product is going to be a product that I can market in the most efficient way. And I, then I would order that product for myself to my house. And I would take my iPhone, this thing that absolutely everybody has, and I would record that product. And I'd spend hours recording that product in different ways. I would do different things with it. I'll chuck it at a wall. I'm going to chuck it in a trash can. I'm going to pour water on it. I'm going to put slime on it. I'm going to record weird angles with it. I'm going to record weird hooks with it. I'm going to record absolutely every single scroll stopper that I can think of with it. Yeah. I'm going to then record <clears throat> cool B-roll with it. I'm going to then take that product and show its functionality. And then I'm going to edit it. Then I'm going to sit at the computer and spend hours and hours and hours editing it. All me. And at the, after I finish that, I'm going to take that and I'm going to start testing those pieces of content. And if I can prove to myself that I can get profitable cost per acquisitions by selling this product, I would take that product. I would order a bulk amount of inventory from China for that product. And I'll start selling that product. Now, drop shipping perspective, I'll start drop shipping that product. But yeah. what I would do first before everything else is make sure that product that I can create some good ass content for that product yeah. and that I can have multiple angles that I can target with that product. And we can go more in depth in this if you want, but that's, that's the, like, that's the nutshell of, of what I would do. Yeah. That's already what you just said is what 99% of dropshippers aren't doing. <laughs> and that's why so many people, um, no, literally. Yeah, literally. And that's, that is the fundamental issue. You know, I get like, I have people ask me on discord or wherever, why, you know, Alex, I've tried, I've tried 20, 20 products. I spent thousand dollars. I still, you know, haven't found something that works. Well, how much content did you test for it? Yeah. Three pieces of content each. Well, guess what, dude? That's not enough. You have to, each product can be targeted. Most products you can sell to a lot of different people. What do I mean by this? Well, let me see if I can find a good example. All right, water, right? You can sell water to everybody. Everybody needs yeah. water. But how you sell it fucking matters. Because if I go to you and I say, hey, this water bottle right here, if you buy this water, it is going to, let's use an example of entrepreneurs. This water right here, come, this is Mountain Valley water, right? It is healthier. It's going to help you as an entrepreneur be more focused throughout the day, help you have a better output and help you be more optimized. I'm angling it with that angle. I'm angling it at you being more optimized, that you being having higher productivity, and I'm aiming it at entrepreneurs. You can create hundreds of pieces of content with that angle in mind. I can also take this water and I can go target bikers. I can say bikers, when you're riding on a bike, you need the freshest water possible to keep pushing, to keep cycling, to make it through the what our travel. I don't I don't know the you know what I'm saying like yeah, yeah. to make it your race. This water is going to help you do that. Well, boom, I'm now targeting biker, you know, people that ride bicycles or cyclists, yeah. and I'm targeting them with this water. And there's hundreds of pieces of content I can create for that. 
you can do this an infinite amount infinite amount, infinite of, amount yeah. of angles infinite amount of groups of people as long as your product can be sold to that person and you yeah. can identify the angle that you can target that person with you can create content for them and until somebody has tested every single possible angle every single possible piece of content content for a specific audience don't fucking tell me the product's like saturated dude i know yeah. people selling fidget spinners still like the strap <laughs> still that, that shine lights on the ceiling like yeah. it's all still being sold when somebody's like it's not it's you know it's saturated and they don't want to sell it anymore they go and switch to another product well guess what the guy who's selling it successfully doing tens of thousands of dollars a day in revenue he's happy about that he's like oh yeah the product's saturated yeah the product's definitely saturated you go to yeah. a different product yeah. he's gonna run the shaft dude mm -hmm. Well, you guys heard it first. I'm going to start drop shipping water. Um, that's going up tomorrow. Um, but yeah, I've actually seen that with my own brand. I'm sure you've seen this too, where like your competitors die out because they're ripping your content and then they run out. Um, I, I've seen it happen in my first time, firsthand with one of my brands. It's turning into a brand. Um, me and my business partner have been running it since like last September, but we've had so many competitors on TikTok and now they're gone and it's just us and a couple other people. Um, so yeah, it's kind of changed my perspective. What you just said about uh, whole products being saturated. Um, if it is quote unquote saturated, you got to put the extra work in to, you know, make, make different angles where it, you're untapped. You go, you go into different audiences that are untapped, which boom, it's not saturated anymore. Don't kind of mind it. blowing, kind of mind blowing. <laughs> um, okay. Um, so a lot of people on my YouTube comment and say, can you do a bid ladder video, bid ladder strategy? Because if you guys aren't in the Discord, I I posted one of my insane days that I use literally following your video on YouTube about the bid ladder. Um, so I thought it'd be perfect if I could share my screen and we can make a bid ladder um, with my TikTok ad account. I have one set up for this and then um, I have some example videos and I made sure to download I downloaded 10 videos because I know you're going to be like, you're going to need more creatives. <laughs> Beautiful. Um, so let me share my screen. Okay. So let's go campaign name. We're going to go cost cap bid ladder. And then would you recommend using this for testing or just when you're scaling? You can use it for testing. Um, one thing to keep in mind on, on what a bid ladder does fundamentally is you're, you're, you're essentially capping the spend. So one thing to keep in mind is when you do do a bid ladder, you know, it's not going to spend the full budget, which is okay. Um, it's not supposed to, uh, but you just want to keep that in mind based on how you create the campaign. If you are just putting in pieces of content that are not super optimized, um, and you just put a bid ladder to it and you let it run, there is a percentage chance that it's going to have a hard time spending because TikTok's going to look at the pieces of content and they're going to try to deliver them and people aren't going to be clicking on them. They're going to have a low click-through rate. Um, your ECPMs are going to, to not be good and they're not going to prioritize the delivery of your, um, of your content. They're not going to prioritize the spend of your budget and simply put, it's not going to spend. So that's the only big thing to consider when 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 doing a bid ladder. As far as testing goes, I test with bid ladders all the time, mm -hmm. and um, I found over over course of time, I found bids that work for us. Right. So what you can also do, and this is completely a separate campaign, is you can just create a campaign that you create an ad set where you have a bid that's working. You dump your content in there that you want to test. And then you just duplicate that a bunch of times and then yeah. you can test with previous winning bids. That also works. Gotcha. Um, so previous winning bids with different pieces of content. You can do different pieces of content. You can also literally stack okay. it. I've, okay. had it. I've had it work both ways. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. There's a lot you can do with it. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So good here. Uh, yeah. 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 Okay. Select your pixel. And then a complete payment. Complete payment. Have you what is Pangle? Have you have you tested Pangle? Dude, I'll be honest. I have no clue what the fuck. Yeah, I, I I have no idea. Just yeah, I've it, always I've always turned <laughs> off Pangle, and then I disable I think downloads on the video, and that's that's the only settings I 
I changed in that section. And then turn on uh, automatic, yeah, automatic yeah. creative optimization. ACO always. So I know you said you just do the US and then um, you Canada as well. Yeah, yeah, we've done US Canada uh, before. Um, we've sometimes also done Australia. I've t like I've grouped US and Canada before. I don't recommend grouping anything other than that. Um, as far as US with any other countries, uh, just because you're going to have at that point a very big difference in the amount of spend you need to have to have a certain click, and it's going to be harder to tell where where those purchases are coming from. Obviously, you can sort it later and you can see exactly where they're coming from. Um, I've just seen better results with grouping. If, if I'm grouping, it's US, Canada. Um, if I'm not grouping, it's going to be, you know, US or Australia or Canada or Germany, you know, et cetera. Gotcha. All right, we'll leave it like this. Um, for me, I usually, whenever I'm testing, <clears throat> Even two of my winning products right now, it's just open targeting um, besides 18 plus. Um, yeah. And then I've tested high spending power has not worked for me. I don't know about you. I have tested it a little bit. I, I haven't played around with it too much. I usually do not. I do not have it on you. Yeah. Uh, one thing I'll, I'll tell you that you can always test. So you see where it says household income? Yep. So household income has worked pretty well for us in the past. If you like top 5% of zip codes, this right. will narrow it down even more. Right. Um, you know, keep that in mind. But it is, um, I think, a good narrow that will deliver your content to people who have more money. Like that's that's what mm. that means. I've never tested that. I'll definitely, I'll definitely try that out. Yeah. Um, for the sake of this. For the sake of this campaign, I'm just going to remove it for now, yeah. but I'm yeah. definitely going to try it out. Um, and then interest. I know when you made – the video I watched where you made your cost cap bid ladder, I think you just went literally insane with um, with hashtags. Like you should a bunch of different um, dog hashtags. Yeah. yeah. So you – and this is now where the, you know, the beauty of the type of bid ladders you can do comes into play. You can, you can do a lot of different things with it. You can do hashtag – do interests lookalikes have been working you know for us um purchase lookalikes um you can do you can test and you should test all of these because you won't know if a specific pocket of audience exists in a specific interest or in a specific lookalike or in a specific hashtag group that it doesn't exist somewhere else and if you don't test it you might miss out on a certain pocket of audience that has a higher likelihood of purchasing your products Gotcha. Cool. Okay. What about target expansion? That's a good question. So if I if I do put some type of um interest in there, I will I will occasionally do target expansion. Um I will also do target expansion if I put five percent um income house household income. Um it's too yeah, narrow. Those are, it's it's a you know it's one of those things that sometimes I'll turn it on sometimes I'll turn it off. Yeah. Um, once you turn it on, you can select between between where you want it to expand in, like which pocket you want it to expand in. Okay. And then I believe you do start up started with fifty dollar budgets. Is that correct? Fifty to a hundred is okay. typically what you do. Um, I've actually done two thousand dollar budgets before, and it did work. <laughs> yeah. Um. It yeah. obviously doesn't doesn't spend two thousand, not even close. Um, but it's kind of telling TikTok that it's capable. Like you kind of want it to spend that, but it's it's not going to spend. Yeah. Really yeah, close to that. Um, but obviously the budget needs to be above your bid. Um, some of my products I sell are quite expensive, and my, I've tested like eighty dollar bids and they've worked. Um, so obviously the budget's got to be higher than that. Yep. For midnight, um, I haven't been day partying that much. Um. I haven't either. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I I tested it early on. Um, it was like a worked a little bit, then stopped working. So I don't day part anymore. Yeah. All right. Here's where the fun begins. Um. So obviously we're gonna make a bunch of different bids. Um. But, like, what's your general rule of thumb for starting off with your bid? I like to start. 
I like to start in the range between between 10 and $20, like any number in between 10 and 20 is where I usually start with. Um, and then depending on the product, depending on, so for example, we have rings, we have necklaces, different price points, yeah. um, depending on the product is going to depend if I am creating that bid ladder going up the ladder or creating that bid ladder going down the ladder. If I'm creating it going up the ladder, I'm going to start with a certain number and then I'm going to just go up from that number. So we could say, you know, $12 and one cent, you know, that could be like the starting bid. Okay. So are you trying to look at like your, does it have any correlation with your CPA, your break-even CPA or anything? It should be ideally about half your break-even CPA going up to your break-even CPA. You want okay. it to be under okay. your break-even CPA. Yeah. All right. That makes sense. These are never, ever correct. These suggested bids. I, I don't know yeah. what they're doing. They're not. Yeah. Um, also go click on advantage or yeah. Advanced settings. Oh yeah. And then turn on accelerated. You do that every time. I do that a decent amount of time. That's going to give a little bit more pressure on the budget to be spent. Yeah. Gotcha. <clears throat> okay. So moving on to the ad level, um, this is where I noticed the biggest difference between what I was doing before and then your strategy for this. I usually always upload three to five videos, but in your video, you recommended anywhere between five and 10, I think, or even more. If you said you had 10, I would upload them all, bro. Okay. Because you can, so you can upload up to 30. They let you upload yeah. up to 30 pieces of content. I have uploaded 30 pieces of content before and had good results with it. Yeah. Um, TikTok is different than than facebook in that sense where i have been able to create ad sets that have 10 20 pieces of content in there wow. and get good performance uh versus on facebook i will typically stick between two to three uh unless it's like a an advantage plus campaign or unless it's like a cbo um that is like a scaling CBO with just winning content, then it might be more than that. Gotcha. All right. For the sake of this video, I downloaded some videos from my YouTube shorts. So I downloaded 10 of them. I'm going to upload all 10 of them. Beautiful. There we go. And then one thing I didn't do, I meant to do before the video is um, I, I usually name my creatives exactly how you name them because it's very, very easy and very, um, very organized. Um, I'll just do, do one of them, but um. This has helped me so much for all, all my all my stores. Um, literally just V1, all the way down to V2, V3, V4, all the way down. Okay. And then for lines of text, I just, I just do three very consistently, like the same three every single time. Um, what do you do? Okay, good question. So text is going to be the second most important thing really? apart from your, from your content. Why? Because you can you're going to communicate what you communicate in your ads to your audience. They're going to be watching the ad, whether they watch it for the first few seconds or they will watch it all the way until the end. You're going to communicate what you communicate through that ad. The text that you add there that shows up there, that is going to be viewed like almost 100% of the time by the people. Whoever's watching your ad, there's a very, 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 very good chance that they're going to at least glance at the text before scrolling. Yeah. So that's why it's extremely important because if you just put a piece of text there, buy one, get 50% off, shop now today, you know, like, like people are going to maybe click on it. They're going to maybe go to, you know, the site for 50% off discount code or whatnot. But I'll tell you what happens if you put, if you answer questions they might have in that text. If they're concerned about our jewelry turning their fingers green and nowhere in the ad does it say it's not going to turn your fingers green. Well, guess what? That text should say will not turn your fingers green. Yeah. Get yours, no green fingers today, pubbring.com. Or if... Yeah. Or if like, if your, if your piece of content, you know, it's a good piece of content and whatnot. Well, what if there's no scarcity in it? Most people don't have scarcity in their content. Their, their scarcity is 50% off ending soon. Well, 
that worked years, you know, like that, that works still, you know, there, there's companies that still do it. One of our biggest competitors, that's their main copy. Yeah. But at the end of the day, what I've seen work the best is when you're able to answer something fundamental that a customer might be wondering, might be curious about in that copy. That is what's going to get them to be like, oh, okay, it won't turn my fingers green. Let me go check it out. Yeah. Or yeah, I mean, there's, yeah, there, there, we, again, this, this could be another topic where I can just go down a rabbit hole in, but that's yeah. like, I don't want to go too deep in it right now. That's kind of the nutshell. Gotcha. Cool. I'll just do one line of text here, answer questions, mm -hmm. but very good point. Um, and then for me, I, I leave this dynamic, um, yeah. put action button, TikTok kind of just pushes, pushes the best one. All right. So we simply duplicated that original ad group. Um, nine times so now we have 10 copies and then this is where you're going to go in and all you do is change the bid manually right here um mm -hmm. so for the sake of going up from this one you, how would you go about determining what the next bid would be i usually have so if we're if if we're in you know if we start with 12 in the 12 dollars my range, so i know for us our working bids are anywhere from you know 11 dollars to maybe like 15 16 dollars so mm -hmm. then i'm just going to make sure that i cover that entire range with the 10 you know 10 ad sets that i have so it's going to be you know like 1201 then the next one is like 1244 then the third one's maybe like 13 okay. yeah. 13 then 1369 then just random numbers 1402 really. then yeah, and it's just going leading up to it. Yeah. Gotcha. So we'll say 12 is the lowest, and then the and top would be like 1501, and then literally anywhere in between. Yeah. Yeah. Sweet. All right, guys, that is the setup for the cost cap bid ladder. And I'll show my results using this um, a literally exact strategy. The bids were a little bit higher because of um, my product was a higher priced product. But other than that, followed the strategy and literally hit like a, I think I hit a 3K, 3K, 5K day, like back to back to back. It was, it was absolutely crazy. Alex, the last question. If there's one piece of advice to give a new dropshipper or someone watching this who hasn't even made the first Shopify store yet, hasn't read their first, first um, ad or even their first organic product, what's the number one piece of advice you would give them? I'm working on a on an e-com education platform that's going to be free. That's what I'd recommend checking out. It's, it's going to be at ecom.live. That's going to be the website. Sweet. That is, yeah, that's going to be where you can find a lot of educational content. And um, apart from that, like, I don't want to just give that answer. I want to give something else too. Yeah. Um, problem solve. As entrepreneurs, we have to problem solve we have to be the people that when the editor comes back from editing and is like hey are these pieces of content good you have to know what a good piece of content looks like you you know you, how can you judge their work how can you build your company forward if you do not know these fundamentals when somebody comes and is telling you that the inventory order got you know messed up you have to figure it out right nobody's figuring out except you you're the entrepreneur you're the you know brand owner you're the drop shipper you have to figure it out and building yourself to that point and and failing and picking yourself back up again and failing and picking yourself back up again and and trying over and over and over even when all hope seems lost it compounds and that's what makes the difference that's the advice i would give well said all right. Awesome. Um, I hope you guys really liked this interview. Um, and I'm going to drop in the buy in the description. I'm going to drop in the description, um, Alex's YouTube and Instagram, please go check it out. And I'm sure I'm sure you guys learn a lot from his content he puts out. Uh, but thank you, Alex. Appreciate it. For sure. Thanks for having me on, bro. Thanks for watching this interview, guys. I hope you guys really liked it. Uh, down below, I will link Alex's um, Instagram, his YouTube, um, please check it out and I'll also link down what he's working on. Uh, I think it's called Ecom Live where you guys can go and learn Ecom stuff from a bunch of other people in the space. Alright guys, see you in the next video. Bye.